just taking up memory and processor. All right, so we have two more functions to put in. Uh, this one will be public void set instigator, and we will pass it a base entity. And we will set instigator type to instigator dot get type, and that should be good. And on trigger enter, so when we collide with an object. Create a variable for other object, and we will find the base entity component. This is purely just so that there's less typing, and it's actually more efficient to just store this in memory. So, if other object is not equal to null. So this will ignore a projectile passing through another projectile, that kind of stuff. And now we're going to check the types of the other object to the instigator. So other ob object uh, get type. If it's not equal to the instigator type, other object uh, take damage and then destroy this object. There. So that should be good for our projectile. And now comes the weapon. Uh, I use gizmos in this, which is just something in the editor. Uh, Basically, it's something visual in the editor that uh, <clears throat> can help you find uh, the direction it's pointing or where the object is without even having anything selected. If you have, say, um, something that's invisible but it's in the world doing something, you can give it a gizmo so that you can see it no problem at all while you're in the editor these gizmos will not show up while you're playing your game. <clears throat> Alright, so for our weapon, we're going to create a couple variables. So, we're going to have a projectile. And I'll call it bullet type. And then, we have a a float, that is the fire rate, and we'll default it at 1. And we'll have another float, actually, have a bool for lock rotation. This will be more for enemies, not so much the player. Then we're going to create some private variables. Uh, quaternion for the starting rotation. This will be used with the this object here. And a base entity which is the owner. Alright. Now, on draw gizmos is what we're going to use to show this object in the editor because all a weapon really is is just a position that projectiles spawn from you don't need anything beyond that really so we go gizmos at draw sphere at this position and the radius will just set to point one and <clears throat> do another gizmo draw line 
from this position to say say half a unit in front of us. So transform dot position plus transform dot forward times zero point five. All right, so I'll show you what the weapon does right now, uh, or what the gizmos will do. Uh, so I'm going to create a new empty game object and drag our weapon script onto it. And now we have this sphere. If you zoom in, there's a line pointing at the direction that it is facing. And so basically, we can attach this object to main character. Ah. Where did you go? There we go. All right. So we'll just put a couple weapons on. Duplicate. And you see that no matter what, we know which direction the weapons are facing. All right. So back to the code. Alrighty. So in start. We need to check and make sure that someone put something in bullet type. Because if we don't have a bullet type, what are we going to shoot? So bullet type is set to null. And we will break so that we cannot move on until we fix it. And our starting rotation will be our rotation. And we'll create a function called enable weapon. That way we can enable and disable weapons whenever we want from another script. going to create another <coughs> coroutine called fire weapon and we're just going to spawn a projectile at whatever rate our fire rate is and we know that this weapon is going to be attached to a base entity so we're going to grab that component. And while true, we'll make an infinite loop. If owner is on the screen, have our location or our rotation locked we'll make sure our rotation is set to the same and we will spawn a new projectile instantiate at our position and our rotation. All right, and we will set the instigator to our projectile. 
so that it knows not to kill us. And we will yield return. New wait for seconds. Fire rate. And we'll, we'll create an else. Uh, we're going to we're going to check and see if this object is on the screen. Basically, every frame. So if the object is not on the screen, we'll just wait and then check again. And if it is, we'll fire the weapon. <clears throat> All right. So public void. This is our enable weapon function. And it's pretty basic. It's just our coroutine fire weapon. And make sure that this script is enabled. And then we have a, another function called disable weapon, <coughs> which we were just going to stop the coroutine. You have to pass it a string. So fire weapon. And you will disable this script. That should be good for this script. So we'll just create our prefabs for the weapon and for the projectile, and we should be good to go. So we'll create a cube for the projectile, and we'll scale it down because that's pretty massive. So we'll go 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. And since the projectile requires a sphere collider, we will remove the box collider and we will attach the projectile to it. And we automatically get our sphere collider. And we'll make sure that this is a trigger. All right. Um, and that should be it for our projectile, really. So we'll create a new prefab, call it projectile. And we'll drag our cube onto it. And delete. And we'll create another new prefab called weapon. And we'll just drag one of our attached weapons to it. And We'll make sure the weapon is attached to the character. We will also add our base entity script to the main character. We also need to remember to set our bullet type to projectile. Alright, and this should be good to go. And uh, maybe I'll make those projectiles bigger, it's pretty hard to see. Go 0.5. Alright. And there you go. We now have a weapon attached to our main character. Yay! And that was that's pretty much it really. Very basic. Um you don't really <clears throat> need to go overboard with your weapon script because like I said, it's just a position that we spawn projectiles at nothing else um, so for our next tutorial I believe I'm creating enemies and I'm going to show you how to use the animation editor and I'm sure that'll be a nice long tutorial and hopefully I'm a little more exciting than I was this time because I was getting bored of myself so this is Purdy Joe signing off and have a good one guys